So this is the lab where you will analyze the moon dust from China. That's right, yeah. So here we are. It's one of the labs which we hope to use. It's called Oxygen Isotope Lab. So when we are ready, we will bring our sample vials into these glove box. We will open them into a controlled atmosphere. There is a, a nitrogen gas that will be present there to avoid any terrestrial contamination. We will actually take a small amount of sample, weigh it out for taking it over to our oxygen isotope machine, which is right next to us, so we can look through that. This machine is called laser fluorination oxygen isotope setup. And in short, what it does is it introduces small amounts of moon dust, and you react that moon dust in the presence of a chemical compound called bromine pentafluoride, and you use laser to heat the sample up and it extracts any oxygen that is present in the sample. Oxygen has three main isotopes, oxygen 16, 17, and 18, and we use that to actually fingerprint the origin of that material. Moon turns out as a ratio which is extremely similar to that of the Earth. So basically, it will help you analyze the oxygen isotope from the moon dust, and then that will help you understand if the moon is related to Earth. Absolutely, yeah, and any differences that we see we have to be able to explain in terms of moon's formation. So if you want to know, is the majority of the material in the moon is made from the Earth's material, or is it from somewhere else, oxygen isotope will help you. I was one of the very few correspondents who covered the launch and return of Chang'e 5 in 2020. I can still remember how cold it was when it landed in northern China. It was quite a cosmic journey, and now some of the samples are here in the UK. I know that you have been working with samples from the Apollo missions and some of the lunar meteorites. And what's, what is your current research now with the new samples? So I'm a planetary scientist, so my primary interest in understanding how planetary bodies form the second thing that I'm interested in investigating, which I have been doing using the Apollo samples and lunar meteorites from before, but Chang'e 5 collected samples from an area of the moon that has never been visited before. We have samples from an area of the moon where volcanic activity happened as recently as only two billion years ago. Because most of the samples collected by the Apollo missions and are sampled by the lunar meteorites, they are three billion years or older. So there is a gap of that one billion. There is an age gap. Age, age gap of yeah. one billion. And you suddenly have samples that actually erupted at the surface of the moon only two billion years ago. So these samples give us the opportunity to actually not only interrogate and investigate what they might be telling us about the inside of the moon, because essentially they are derived from the interior of the moon. So we can use these samples as a window into the lunar interior. And your theory is there was water and volatiles in the moon, which challenged the theory of a dry moon. And what are you hoping to uncover with the new samples you have got? So it, th that has been the, the discovery of water in the lunar samples has been probably the biggest finding so far in my research career. However, Chang'e samples actually brought about a bit of a twist in that theory, yeah. right? Because what we found was the water amount in the moon was not as much as it was indicated from the Apollo samples. It was a bit different. And now we have even Chang'e 6 samples that have been brought from the far side, and this story is becoming even more complicated. And it is telling us a little bit different story about the history of water on the moon. But all of these recent work are showing that the moon is not dry. So that's the first thing. So we do have water inside the moon. The amount seem to vary. And exactly where this water came from is still an open question. We think it came from um, cometary and asteroidal impacts, perhaps even derived from the original nebula from which the moon and the earth formed, or solar wind that is still bombarding the lunar surface. But these are like four major sources that we think have contributed to this water, but we exactly don't know the contributions, in which proportion did these sources contribute to the ultimate water quantity that we are finding, right? And that's the next um, uh, question uh, for, for us to address. And this is the first time that China has given out lunar samples to other scientists from other countries. And what does it say about China-UK collaboration in space exploration and beyond? Well, this, is, this is a great start. But I hope that now with this experience, you know, 
things can be expedited and the subsequent request by myself and by my colleagues from elsewhere in the world you know would take a lot less time to get the samples and it's not just China and the UK it could be China and other country and it could be UK and any country that is actually participating in space exploration so this is a great example for uh, everybody to follow and, and in a way we are following a great tradition that has already been established by previous missions that have brought lunar samples back, be they from the US or from the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And are you planning on obtaining some lunar samples from the Chang'e 6 mission from last year? Chang'e 6 samples are representing the far side. Now, far side samples are coming from a big basin called South Pole Aitken Basin, which is the largest impact basin in the solar system, right? It formed just over 4 billion years ago. And it is thought that the impact was so big and so impactful that it almost brought the interior, including mantle of the moon, very close to the surface. So it may be that Chang'e 6 samples actually contain fragments of material that represent that lunar mantle. So it could be a painstaking exercise or it could be a serendipitous discovery. So it could actually help advance the scientific understanding of planetary differentiation, planet formation, you know, in leaps and bounds. And I can't wait for that to come.